All right, just about to install the new caliper. And here are the components that we have for them. So brand new uh, caliper mounting bolts, new slide pins and locking uh, tabs. The caliper itself, these have new uh, stainless steel pucks installed, new brake line and new pads. And just for reference, here is the old components. We need the anti-squeal anti shims, so I'll stick those up here. So these I'd worked on before stripping. So uh, here are the old components we won't be using, but always good to have them for reference. All right, guys, we're going to call the uh, front end pretty much done. There's a few things I need to do. Uh, there's a brake bracket that I need to put on the back um, that I've got in the bag, and uh, a couple of short brake lines that I can actually install just temporarily, just so I know I've got the parts and I'm not missing anything. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I've got an empty bin here. I'm going to start collecting up the parts that I don't need that I've used. So uh, the old parts can go away, back in a bin, and we'll figure out what to do with those at a later date. So things like shocks and coil springs, I don't need. Calipers, I don't need, for example. Those can go back in the bin, and any old fasteners that I don't require can also go in the bin. So we'll clean this place up a little bit, and then we'll move on to the rear of the car. All right, guys, that's looking good now. We've uh, cleaned up the area up front here and got rid of all the excess parts. Most of the parts at the front there are regarding the uh, steering rack, and the sway bar and the chassis cross tube so those still need to go on the car at some point so uh, I've also got the front soft brake lines in bracket that still need to be installed I actually need to clean the brackets up haven't brought the actual soft brake lines out yet but we'll do that uh, in the future got two parts left over from my magic kit no idea what these are for but uh, one for left side one for right side so uh, yeah extra parts gotta love it I'm pretty sure I'm not missing anything, so <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the rear of the car. All right, guys, we're going to start in the rear end by installing the uh, Richard Good, so good parts, adjustable uh, trailing arm brackets, and uh, beautiful piece of kit. I've got these on my TR6. I've had them on for probably 11, 12 years since they came out, and they're fantastic. Uh, big upgrade, upgrade over the uh, stock brackets. And uh, I find a lot of the stock brackets actually have uh, fractured or cracked uh, through the bolt holes. So uh, these are just an another area of upgrade uh, where safety is concerned. So not only uh, as far as adjustability for the camber is concerned, but also from a safety perspective, they're a great upgrade. So highly recommend these uh, good parts brackets. Um, I can't remember how much they are exactly. I think they're around 150 bucks for the kit, but don't quote me on that. So. Anyway, we'll go ahead and follow the instructions and get these set up. We've got our freshly painted uh, trailing arms here ready to go, so uh, we'll get those on the car, car shortly. Alright guys, I thought I'd do a quick uh, video on uh, installing Richard Goods trailing arm brackets. So obviously these are on my TR250, but these apply to uh, TR6s. And I'm assuming they'd apply to the IRS TR4As as well. Okay guys, I've got the brackets laid out as they should be. Now this is what Richard calls for. So let me go over some terminology. So this is the adjuster bolt, this guy on the side, and this is called the pivot bolt. So Richard says that the adjuster bolt, the head, needs to be pointing down. So there's a nut on the top, and he considers this the head. You can see that there. So the heads are pointing down. The adjusters are pointing to at each other face to face on the inside of the brackets. Okay, so the next step is Richard says that uh, uh, the adjuster on the inner bracket should be set fully down and the adjuster on the outside bracket should be set in the middle. So I'm not going to touch this bracket, it's relatively centered at the moment, but we are going to move this all the way down. So I'll show you that in the next step. Okay, here's what I do to adjust this bracket down. First of all, I remove the, uh, the pivot bolt. All right, I'll just put that aside. Just remember which way you took it out. Then we'll get our, uh, I think it's a half inch wrench and we are just going to crank this with our half inch wrench until the adjuster bottoms out.
and you can probably not see this very well, but this block here is moving downwards. There's a channel. I don't know if you can see it maybe from this side. So there's a channel here, and you're trying to move this block all the way to the bottom. Okay? Hope I'm not making you dizzy. Okay, so that's at the bottom. So we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, so uh, the pivot bolt is out of the inner bracket. The pivot bolt is out of the outer bracket. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually assemble these brackets onto the actual trailing arms and get them ready to attach to the frame. Okay, so there's probably a couple different ways to do this, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna assemble this off of the car and then we're gonna slide it onto the car. So first thing I need to do is I need to take a washer and a bolt and I'm going to be difficult to do this one-handed, but I'll do the best I can. And we're going to actually put these bolts through the actual bracket that attaches this to the frame of the car. Okay. Alright guys, just coming up to 8 p.m. Sorry I was stopped mid-tutorial on the trailing arm brackets as my memory card ran out of memory. So I had to go inside and download the camera. Anyway, there is what the uh, finished brackets look like on the trailing arm, as they should look. Again, they haven't been torqued up or anything like that, but uh, that's how the brackets look like when they're installed on the car. Again, the inside one, low as far as it can go, and this one about medium, right in the middle. And we've got the uh, nylocks and washers on the inside, on the frame rail. So that's installed, both uh, driver side and passenger side are both installed. So uh, we're ready to actually do the shock absorber to hold up the trailing arm, but I wanted to paint these um, tube shock brackets, so we've gone ahead and done that. We've sandblasted them and painted those. So it's going to take a while for that to dry. So we will continue on doing another little project. Still an hour or so to go out in the garage before I get tired. So we're going to start working on the uh, brake back plates and put the wheel cylinders in and uh, the adjusters in. So we're going to work on that now. Alright guys, here's the uh, brake backing plate and uh, this is the lever for the emergency brake. Uh, obviously the springs for the shoes. This is the uh, wheel cylinder fitting kit or fixing kit. So it says three locking plates. A little uh, boot for that. There's the wheel cylinder itself and there's the adjuster. So new, new wheel cylinder. We're using the existing adjuster. We just cleaned it up a little bit. The new adjusters tend to break off these studs at the rear, so we're going to keep our originals. We've just cleaned it up, we'll lube it up, and we should be good to go. We'll see if we can find a couple of new nuts for it. We've got some new lock washers. So, we're ready to uh, start installing this, and uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, install the wheel adjuster first. Uh, sorry, the um, brake shoe adjustment first, and then we'll do the wheel cylinder after that. Alright guys, we've got our adjuster in. Now we're going to put our wheel cylinder in. It goes in just like this, fits through like so and then we'll affix it on the back with the uh, locking plates bring you back when I flip it over all right there's what the wheel cylinder looks like on the back of the brake so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our first locking clip and we're gonna slide it this way with a little slight uh, arch on it with the pins up you'll notice that I put a little bit of grease a little bit of brake grease behind the wheel cylinder this is actually used to move back and forth so um, probably going to put a little grease actually underneath here before I put this tab on and uh, then we'll go from there. Alright guys, next goes in the uh, handbrake lever with just a one locking plate on there and it fits basically just like this. You can be able to see that. You have enough room basically to lift it up and out. So, let me see if I can get this into focus. So here's how it goes in. So, see me, it goes in like this lift it up and then it just slots back into these little retainers there you go just like that okay so that's the next step to install that lever we'll go on to the next step flip it back over and just for reference there's what the handbrake lever looks like coming through the back of the plate so we're gonna add the next locking tab 
So the next little uh, tab is to be installed is this little guy, this little locking tab, and it's got little pins that stick up as well. It's going to go in the same direction that you did the first tab, and you're just going to slide that in. If you can see this or not, sometimes you need to tap it in with a small hammer. Sometimes you can get it in, but probably going to need a little hammer here. So carefully. Mark up your new paint, that's what touch up paint's for. I'm gonna have to move you over here. Almost there. Okay. There it is. what that looks like installed now to the next one all right the final step is to put this one in and this large plate actually goes between the two plates that you've previously installed and this little uh, cutout piece actually locks into these tabs here so you're gonna have to tap this between the two in the opposite direction that you installed the first two so you're gonna put this in and make it basically a sandwich so I'm not gonna film this but I'm just gonna tap that in and that will lock that in place Alright guys, just want to give you a quick shot of the uh, plates installed and the tabs locked in. So the only other thing we have to do now is install the little boot over the uh, emergency brake handle which just sort of fits over. And then this boot just fits over the edges of this locking plate. So we'll fit that and we'll call this one done and move on to the next one. Alright guys, there's the uh, new brake back plate uh, with the wheel cylinder and the adjuster. Here is the old one that uh, we're not going to be using. So we're actually got our new uh, shoes out here. We've got our new uh, clips. We've got our springs up there. So uh, we're going to install this. I got uh, old Les here showing me how to do it. Getting a little lesson. So we're just going to continue on. So this is the driver's side. So we'll just go ahead and we'll uh, finish this up. We'll bring this back. All right, guys, the uh, new driver's side brake back plate is complete. So that's looking good. There's the old, and there's the new. So we're going to do the passenger side, and uh, we'll call the brakes done. All right, guys, just coming up to 10 p.m., and we're going to wrap it up in the uh, garage for tonight. Um, happy to have got the uh, brake back plates completed. So we've got the drums waiting there. We've got uh, new drum retaining screws. We've got the shocks here. We've got the brackets painted for the lever shocks. We've got the lever shocks here. So that'll all go in tomorrow. We've got the axles and hubs inside. So we'll uh, bring those out. We need to put the diff in uh, at some point as well and the stub axles for the diff. So we'll do that tomorrow. I've got all new mounting kits and stability cups for the differential. So we'll bring those out from the house tomorrow as well. And we'll clean up the bits that we are no longer using and throw them in the bin over there just to get them off the floor and get this place cleaned up a little bit. So that's it for tonight, guys. We'll upload what we've got and uh, we'll get back out here bright and early tomorrow. All right, hopefully it'll be pretty close to rolling by tomorrow evening. i got to go up to storage and get some wheels. And i got to find the uh, lug nuts for the wheels somewhere in here. So 
That'll be a bit of a chore for tomorrow as well. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.